Ivan Denisovich always got up at the clanging of the rail, but this day he didn't. He'd been feeling rotten since the previous evening, feverish with pains all over his body. He hadn't been able to keep warm all night. Even in his sleep he felt at one moment that he was really ill, at another that he was getting better. He didn't want the morning to come, but the morning came as it always does. S-854, three days in the cells, with work. But why, Citizen Guard? For not getting up on time. Come with me. Attention with work? That's not so bad. Well, at least you get hot food and no time to think. Could have been worse. S-854, I'm letting you off. Scrub the floor. Thank you, Citizen Guard. I'll never get up late again. Well? Do we work or do we not work? Don't breathe on it, for God's sake. We don't want you to warm it. Warm it? My bread wouldn't warm anything. We'll work. It's nowhere near 40 below. Come down. 27 and a half below. Not a bit more. Time. It always lies. Do you think they hang one up that gives the real temperature? How much water are you going to use, swine? Have you ever seen anyone wash a floor like that? It's the only way to get it clean, citizen guard. The dirt's ingrained. Didn't you ever see your woman scrubbing floors, pig? I was taken away from my wife in 41, citizen guard. I can't remember what she looks like. Well, that's the way they scrub. The swine don't know how to do anything and don't want to. We ought to feed them on dung. Bread's much too good for them. 
There's no point in washing the floor every day. It only gets damp. Hey, you! Just wipe it over and then get out. Fast. After I've eaten, I'm going to the infirmary. I'm sick. I'll come later. I may not have any left, then. I kept your breakfast for you, Ivan Denisovich. It's cold. I'm just going to eat it. I thought you were in the cells. Soup was the same every day. Fish and whatever vegetable was provided that winter. The year before it had been salted carrots. This year it was cabbage. When they ran out of that, they'd give them stewed nettles. Rumor had it that it was the Chinese who had given the authorities the idea of serving boiled grass instead of porridge. A bowl full of it weighed more than half a pound, but when you'd eaten it, you were still hungry. The good thing about it was that it had no taste, hot or cold. I should have thought about that earlier. You know as well as I do that in the morning I'm allowed to exempt from work two men only. And I've already exempted them. I've written their names down. See? Yes, Collier, but last night when it should have ached, it didn't. I know it does. So, where does it ache? Well, if I think about it, nowhere. I just feel bad all over. I've already drawn a line across the page. See? Come on. Take this. You should know better. Reporting sick just before parade? Ivan Denisovich's fate was poised in the balance. At this moment, his team leader was fighting with the authorities to save the men. They'd been ordered to go to work on a new site, which was to become the socialist centre for cultural activities, but which was as yet nothing but a huge barren waste covered with snowdrifts. There would be nowhere to shelter, nowhere to get warm.
and so he was dreaming of being ill. Not dangerously ill, of course, but bad enough to lie in bed for three weeks or so. Either one thing or another, 99.2. If it had been a hundred, there'd be no problem. No, I can't exempt you. Stay behind at your own risk if you want. The doctor will examine you. If he thinks you're ill, he'll exempt you. If not, well, you'll be put in the cells. You'd uh, do better to go to work. How can you expect somebody who's warm to understand somebody who's cold? So you're not in the cells, Ivan Denisovich. Still alive. Thank you. So busy seeing you. Ivan Denisovich. You're not going to the Socialist Center for Cultural Activities after all. The team leader has fixed it. We're in luck. Time's up, hundred and four. Out you get. you and your men. You're late again. You've got one man set and 23 bit for work. Is that it? 23. Who's say? Pantelier. Security people are keeping him back. I don't understand. He'll be squealing again. Is he an informer? 
While we're at work, they can question him when they like. They fix it through the infirmary. Give us a drag, Cesar Markovic. Take it. We bind the niece of it. One's got two shirts. Speed up now. Just take the names of anyone wearing extra clothes. Lionel Vesta. Name and number. I want a written explanation by this evening. Hand it in with the Vesta for stores. Keep moving. Name and number. You've no right to make people undress in this cold. You don't know Article 9 of the Criminal Code. You're not true Soviets. You're not true communists. Ten days in the cells. Starting from this evening. It's always coldest at dawn. It's the end of that cooling off process which happens during the night. Keep them moving! Keep them moving! Home five! Move! Move! One! Two! Each man is more precious Three. than gold. If there's one head short when they get past the wire, one of the guards will have to replace it with his own. No one dared make a mistake. If you signed for one head too many, you made it up with your own. Column order on the march will be strictly obeyed. Keep to your ranks. No hurrying. Keep a steady pace. No talking. You will look to the front at all times and keep your hands behind your back. A step to the right or a step to the left is considered an attempt to escape. And the escort has orders to shoot without warning. Leading rag, quick march!
Bye. Pablo, come with me to the office. The rest of you get to the repair shop. Wait for me there till I know where we have to work today. Will you bring my lunch to the office, please, Van der Nistic? Only when the towers were manned were the prisoners allowed to enter the work site. Here, from sunrise to sunset, they worked and then were marched back to camp again after darkness had fallen. What are you doing picking up that filth? You'll get a syphilitic lip. Throw that stuff away. When you have done eight years, Captain, you'll be picking them up yourself. I've seen it happen to a prouder man than you. You shouldn't have shown your pride so much, Captain, when they searched you. Let's get moving, the 38. One blizzard yet. Not one snowstorm all winter. Mm -hmm. What sort of a winter is this? Not so special about a snowstorm. They don't send you out to work, of course. You can escape in a snowstorm, Captain. How far do you think you'd get? A blizzard? <laughs> no good to anyone. Food doesn't reach the camp. No bread, no hot meals. And it doesn't matter how long it takes, you have to make up the time by working Sundays. Well, I love a good blizzard. Whenever I hear the wind blow up, I look up at the sky and I think, let's have some of the real stuff, the more the merrier. It'll take us half a day to get this place right before we can start work. It's exactly like the sixth left in last autumn. We've got to do it. Get the men to work. Now, boys, after we've eaten, we'll be working on the second story, laying blocks. We will use this place for mixing water. And for keeping warm. Right. If you are to live through the next weeks, you must keep out the cold. So find something to cover those windows.
listen, friends. You'd do better to light little fires over these holes. The ground would thaw out then. We're not allowed to. You won't give us any firewood. Scrounge them. authorities had any brains in their heads. Do you think they'd make men hack away at the ground with pickaxes in a frost like this? Yeah. It was lying about. I put it here when the snow came. Ah, still here. Yes, how are we going to carry it? Yeah, they're sure to spot us. Well, if they don't, they'll see it in the windows and then they'll know where it came from. What's that got to do with us? We can say it was already at the power station when we got there. What are we supposed to do? Pull it down? We can't carry it lengthwise. But upright. roofing fell for the windows. Good. Now we start again. What the hell are you doing? Hey, don't know no star. We'll need them to hold on to. Tanker! Tanker, I said don't knock down the rails. We'll need them to hold on to. All right. You want to freeze to this? Make a good job of it, Gopchik. We're fixing this for ourselves. Clean up. Get on with the job or I'll warm your asses for you. Team leader, look at this. They bring the buckets of water, but they freeze up on the way. Wouldn't it be quicker to melt snow? No. Keep them at it. I'm going to hand you the work report. More depended on the work rates than on the work itself. A clever team leader concentrated on the work rates, for on the work rates depended the rations. If something hadn't been done, the team leader made it look as though it had. 
He turned jobs that were rated low into jobs that were rated high. But who in the end profited from these work rates? Let's be clear about it. The camp. The camp made a profit of thousands of rubles out of the prisoners' work, and their profit was shared out among the officers. So why, you might ask, should the prisoners labor so hard, day in, day out, ten long years for the camp? You'd think they'd say, no, thank you, and that's that. We'll do nothing. But they'd thought of that. The authorities had invented the teams so that the guards shouldn't have to drive the prisoners, but that the prisoners should drive one another. It worked like this. Either they all got something to eat, or they all had to starve. Hey, deputy team leader. I've finished. It's ready. I'll make some hods out of these. Hods? What for? For carrying mortar up to the second story. No, no, not coal. Use wood. Yeah, yeah, we'll get warm quicker with wood. Put the coal on, idiot. We want flames. Good lads, put the wood up. You're not pulling your weight, you little rat. You think I'm going to go hungry because of you? Put your guts into it and shift sands. Ready. Yes, the sun won't get any higher. If the sun is at its peak, it's one o'clock, not noon. What do you mean? Any old man can tell you the sun's at its highest when it's time to eat. Yes, any old man, perhaps. But since their day, a new decree has been issued that the sun is at its highest at one o'clock. Who issued the decree? The Soviet government. Do you say the government can even tell the sun what to do? Out, it'll scorch. You'll have a hole in it till the spring. What does Ivan Denisovich go? He's got one foot home already. Yeah, the one without the boot. <laughs> Ivan Denisovich's sentence is almost over. Now, don't start counting all the time you've got to do. Anyway, you don't know if you'll be here for your full 25 years. And who knows they'll let me out when my time's up? They didn't let the team leader out. He's serving his second. Well, all I know is I've done eight years out of ten, and that's for sure. Gave evidence against myself. Who didn't? Right. They said I'd surrendered to the enemy with the intention of betraying my country. I'd come back with instructions from the Germans. What instructions? They never said. If I didn't sign, they'd shoot me. If I did sign, well, at least I'd go on living for a while. I signed. Forty-two it was, February. The whole army was cut off. We cut the hooves off dead horses, soaked them in water to soften them and ate them. Yeah. No ammunition either. The Germans tracked us down, locked us up for a couple of days. Then five of us managed to escape, got back to our own lines. Our lads thought we were Germans. Opened fire with machine guns. The two next to me were killed on the spot. Another one died of wounds. Two of us left alive. Of course, we should have said we got lost in the forest, but we told the truth. So they said, escape from the Germans, no, you bastards. You put your heads together with the enemy and cooked up the old story. Ten years. Three times I escaped. Three times they caught me. Okay, Von Denisovich, you've been in for eight years. But what camps? 
Not specials like this for your enemies of the state. You have women to sleep with. You didn't have to wear numbers. Try and spend the whole eight years in a special. No one comes out of a special alive. I never saw any women. All I ever saw was logs. No, you can live all right here. We don't work nights. We stop work at the same time every day. Whether you finish your quota or not, you're allowed back to the camp to sleep. That's the law. And bread? The basic ration is six ounces more. Okay, it's a special, so what? Does it bother you to wear a number? They don't weigh anything, you know, numbers. No, I think we have a quieter life here. At least we're not amongst thieves and murderers. A quieter life? Men having their throats cut while in their bunks? You call that quieter? Not men. Squealers. We've left it too late. We should have got our place in a queue long ago. Ah, uh, yes. You might have counted 14, but you didn't give a mouse. Count them if you don't believe me. They're all here on the table. Okay, show me. It's a pleasure. Put it out the way, son. It's spoiling the view. See, two rows of six, 12, two on top, 14, all nice and tidy. Count them. Where's your team? They're not all here yet. Then by the hell are you taking balls? Finish eating, clear out, and let us in. There they are. 16. Four extra bowls. That is the team leader. One is for the team leader. One is for Chazar. And the other two? Denisovich, take Chazar's bowl to him, and there's an extra one for you.
Captain. Hey, Captain. What? Take it. Take it. You can't take food out of here. Somebody in the office. Wait for it. No, my dear old friend. Objectively speaking, you must admit that Eisenstein was a genius of the cinema. Ivan the Terrible. Isn't that the film of a genius? The dance of the Tsar's bodyguard in those masks. The scene in the cathedral. Mannered. It's also called right. Pep and Papa seat instead of brother butter. And the politics. Evil. The justification of one man tyranny. An insult to the memory of three generations of Russian intelligentsia. But what other interpretation of the subject would have been permitted? Permitted? But then don't speak of him as a genius. Call him an opportunist. Say that he carried out orders like a dog. A genius doesn't compromise his work to suit the taste of tyrants. Now look. Art is not a question of what. It is a question of how. To hell with your how. If it doesn't touch me. <laughs> and the prisoners have been chopping up expensive boards for firewood. And the cement, they unloaded in a strong wind. The, the whole area round the stores is, is ankle deep in cement. It's a complete waste. You're not a peasant. You're a son of a farmer. A land owning pig, you screamed at me. You betrayed Soviet power. You've been hiding in the army for years. I was discharged the same day. Hey, now, let me some tobacco till tomorrow, you know, I won't let you down. It was in the middle of November. They'd given me nothing to wear but my summer uniform. I had no money, no special travel documents. All I had was a couple of loaves of bread I bought under the counter. So I got over a brick wall and climbed into the lavatory behind the station. Police everywhere. The Vladivostok Moscow train was in. There was a crowd with their kettles around the hot water tap on the platform. I noticed a girl in a blue jersey. She was scared of pushing through the crowd to the tap. She didn't want her little feet trodden on, so I said, well, hang on to these loaves. I'll fill your kettle for you. And while I was doing it, the train began to move. And she was holding the bread. She burst into tears. Run, I shouted. I'll follow you. Off she went, me after her. I caught up with her and hoisted her onto the train with one arm. There were six of these girls, students going to Moscow. We talked and choked and drank together. They asked where I was going. Girls, I said, death is my destination. They hid me all the way to Novosibirsk. One of them I was able to repay later. She was on her last legs doing hard labor. I got her fixed up in the tailoring shop. Team leader, should we begin to mix the mortar? When I got off the train, I went to our house, but I left the same night. Took my little brother with me, handed him over to a gang of drifters, thieves, pickpockets. Teach him how to live, I said. By the way, in 38, at the Kotlas Deportation Center, I met a former officer who told me that both my regimental commander and the commissar who had accused me had been shot in 37. So you do exist, I said to myself. You are a patient, but when you strike, you strike hard. You never saw your brother again? Never again. 
Well, that's... Don't worry. We'll live through it. Even in this damn power station. I fixed a good work report. Good rates for the next five days. So don't let's sit about. Get going, motor mixers. Don't wait for a whistle. Hey, you're of the Soviet Union. Hurry up with that plumb line. Never mind the plumb line. What about the ice on your wall? You open to use your trial before evening? Hey, boys. I'll make the fourth block layer myself. We'll work in pairs so that the water doesn't freeze in the hearts. Ivan Denisovich, you take Zenka with you on your wall. I'll work with Kilgas. If you're going to leave blocks, I'll mix the mortar for you myself. We'll see which one of us can work the faster. Hey, where's the one with trouble? Come on. There and stand in for me a moment. Help Kilgas to clean up the wall. You bring the blocks to me, Alios. Understand? Put them there and there. Give me a man to work with. I'm not going on with this slacker. Little rat. Right. Petrikov, go down and help with the blocks. I'm sending you Petrikov. See that he does as much work as the others. Right. Send him down. Ayosha, you work with the captain. Ah, now I feel better. Right, sailor. It's all hands on deck. You see how fast they're laying the blocks? Well, we'll have to keep up with them, won't we? Yes. Yeah. Whatever you say. Team leader, they've come to repair the electrical hoist. Two men, a civilian and a fitter. 
That's right. Stick to the rules. One man works, one man watches. Look who's here. criminal offence. Stolen goods. Roofing felt on the windows of the generator room. You'll get a third sentence for this. Your time for passing sentences is over. If you so much as say a word about it, you bloodsucker, this will be your last day on earth. What should I tell the superintendent? Sure. Tell him it was like that when we arrived. Hey, that's right, my fault. Why are you using such a thin layer of mortar? You might like to know, my dear sir, that if I lay the mortar on any thicker in frost like this, when the thaw comes, the old place will melt away. I'm a foreman, you're a bricklayer. Listen and do what I tell you. You get that mechanic and hoist fixed! What do you think we are? Donkeys carrying blocks up to the second story by hand? They'll give you double the rate for bringing them up. Yeah, wheelbarrow rates. You try pushing a wheelbarrow up here. We want triple rates for carrying them up by hand. You don't think I'd mind, do you? But the bookkeepers wouldn't pass it. The hell with the bookkeepers. I've got the whole team sweating to get four masons at work. How much do you think we learn? Water! Water! Team leader, the fitter says the hoist can't be repaired. Damn the whole lot of you. Pablo wants to know how you're getting off for mortar. Make some more. We've got half a box ready. Make another. Keep going! You bastards!
We've left it a bit late. Don't worry about all that. Get downstairs and empty out the mixer. Take the mortar, put it in the hole, and cover it with snow so nobody can see it. Pablo, take a couple of lads, collect all the tools, and turn them in. I'll send the last three fowls with Kopchik. We'll finish off the two hearts that are here. <laughs> Not bad, eh? With half a day, and without the hoist. I'll finish off the mortar, boys. My trial's not on the list, so there's no need to hand it in. You can all give your trials to Gopchik. I'll keep going. What are we going to do when I let you out, Ivan Denisovich? What are we going to do without you? <laughs> Come on! You'll be late! To hell for the mortar! Sling it over the wall! Don't wait, you need it over there! Why do these rats make the work take so short? You were just getting going when I call it off. ten days in the cells. They'll beat you. You run. I'll catch up with you. anyone behind in the power station. Think. No. Think again. I'll kick your brakes. I said no. Four 
Blue Muffin teams. And in a boat. Over here. 65. This way. 45. Over here. Over here. This way, Bertie's. Uh, How are things? How are things? Worked like a horse. Can hardly straighten my back. Twenty-three. Andrew, that horse, all here. Do you remember that shot on the Potemkin when the Persne were hanging from the ship's rigging? Mm -hmm. Or or a scene where the pram went bumping slowly, slowly down the steps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The life on board seems a bit artificial. Well, the trouble is, you see, we've been spoiled by modern cinema techniques. Big close-ups. Yeah, those maggots crawling all over the meat. They were as big as earthworms. And they couldn't really have been that size, could they? <laughs> no. No, what? What do you expect for the screen? Show them any small and never see them. Hmm? They gave us that meat instead of the rotten fish we got. Let me see you in the third second. 37. K-400. K-460. K-460. That's the spy. Oh, yeah, the real one. For the Romanians. God help him. Are we going through all this for that rat? For that slimy little snake? That stinking pig? up on the scaffold, went up there to get away from me, got warm and fell asleep. After it sets. What do you mean? Where does it go? Don't show your ignorance. It's simply that you can't see it. If you can't see it, how do you know it's there? What are you suggesting? That every month we're given a brand new moon. People are born every every day. Why not a new moon every four weeks? I've never met a man as stupid as you in all my life. Where do you think the old moon goes? That's what I'm asking you, where? Now you tell us. Well, in our village back home, old people say God breaks the old moon up into stars. <laughs> Savages. I never heard anything like it. You believe in God, do you? Well, why not? Hear him thunder and try not to believe in him. Why does God do it? To do what? break the old moon up in the stars. Why? Well, can't you work it out? The stars fall down now and then. The gaps have to be filled somehow. Open the gate!
though they are very strict about such things. If you're in command of a ship but of a lower rank, they call you captain only as a courtesy. That's so. Uh, how come you know British Navy life so well? Eh? I spent nearly a month aboard a British cruiser. I was seconded to an Arctic convoy as liaison officer. At my own cabin. Then, if you please, after the war, the British Admiral sent me a gift with the inscription which read, a token of our gratitude. Damn it. It came as a thunderbolt. One day I'm in command of my own ship. The next day I'm sent here as a spy. What about you, then? How many films have you made? Oh, they arrested me while I was still shooting my first one. You stop! Move! Come on, move! What the hell are we running for? It's the column from the machine works. We've got to get back first. Or we'll never get anything to eat. Come on, you stop! Move! Bring up the machine work column. Here's an article. Uh, I'll unstretch the parcels, I to keep a place in the queue for you. Why should you do that if I'm the least Maybe there won't be a parcel. Farm pie! Farm pie. It, it, it doesn't matter, I'll wait ten minutes anyway. If you don't turn up, I'll go to the house. All right, if I'm in this switch. You run ahead, keep the place for me. Open the gate! Okay, 460. Forward, Hands behind back. You will be charged with attempting to escape.
Long ago, Ivan Denisovich had written to his wife not to send parcels. Back home, it had been easier for him to feed his whole family than it was to feed himself now. But he knew what the parcels cost. He knew, too, that his family wouldn't be able to keep it up for ten years. Better do without them. But when anyone he knew received a parcel, his heart ached because there wasn't one for him. And even though he'd forbidden his wife to send anything, every now and then he longed for someone to run up and say, Ivan Denisovich, there's a parcel for you. Have you heard? There'll be no Sunday again this week. Ah, Pyotr Mihailovich. Look what I've got. Straight from the printing press. Last week's evening paper. They sent it by airmail from Moscow. Really? It's an extremely interesting review of a Zabatsky first night. Muscovites. They can smell each other a mile away. Yeah, they sniff and sniff like dogs. I can never understand them. So I can, uh... Churchill Markovich. I'll be off now. Yes, yes, of course, of course. Uh, just tell me, who's in front of me, who's behind me? F-127 in front, D-301 behind. Shall I bring you your supper? No, no, you eat it yourself if I'm beneath it. Thank you. 
Denisovich? There's a mark of it in any tobacco left? Yeah. Not the same as before? Of course it's the same. You never get any other kind. Press it down. Press it down. I know. I know. There. Give me another. You packed it too loose. There you are. Yes. 
gold in my fingers. There's no pens, no ink. They should have them. They've been taken away. Watch it, team leader. Talk like that and I'll put you in the cells. See those reports? I'll hand it in tomorrow before parade. And the unauthorized garments to be surrendered at the clothes store. Get it? I get it. Let's see now. S311. He's one of yours. Is he? Is S311 one of ours? I have to check my list. You don't expect me to remember all those damn numbers, do you? Boynowski? Is he here? Yes, here I am. S311. Right. Come on. <coughs> where am I going? You know where. How many days? Ten. Come on. Come on, get a move on. Evening counts. All out for the evening counts. Well, brothers. Goodbye. Good luck. Don't let him get you down, Captain. See you soon. Come on now, everyone. How to get in the house? Out before a car three. Anyone who isn't out will have his number taken. And I'll report him. Treasure Markovic, look. Wait till everybody's gone or they'll steal the lot. Then when the guard comes, say you're not feeling very well. I'll go out first and I'll be back first. That's the way. Frightened of. Never seen frost before. Come outside. Warm yourselves by the moon.
you. You get that boot in your teeth. Put your boots up there if you want, but don't touch anybody else's. Thank you, Ivan Denisovich. Thank you, God. That's another day gone. And thank you, I'm not sleeping in the cells tonight. You see, Ivan Denisovich, your soul is crying out to pray. Why don't you listen to it mm. and set it free? I'll tell you why, Alyosh. Prayers are like the complaints we make to the authorities. Either they don't get there, or they come back marked rejected. That's because you don't pray often enough. And when you do pray, you don't give your whole heart. That's why your prayers don't get answered. You must pray without end. If you had real faith, you can tell a mountain to move. And it will move. Come off it, Alyosh. You and all your Baptists, when you were down there in the Caucasus praying, how many mountains did you move? We didn't pray for that. Of all earthly and mortal things, our Lord commanded us to pray only for our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Mm, our bread ration, you mean. If Antonisovich, you mustn't pray to get a parcel or for an extra helping of porridge. Things that men set store by are an abomination in the eyes of the Lord. Pray for things of the Spirit. Pray that Jesus Christ will scourge the wickedness from our hearts. Alyosha, I'm not against God, understand that. I believe in God, all right. But I don't believe in heaven and hell. You do think we're fools? Why, why do you give us all this heaven and hell stuff? That's what bothers me. You can pray as much as you like, but it won't take anything off your sentence. You'll have to sit it out from beginning to end. But you mustn't pray for that either. Why do you want freedom? If you were free, what little faith you had left would be lost in the turmoil. Rejoice that you're in captivity. Here you're free to examine your soul. Paul the Apostle said, I am ready not to be bound only, but to die for the name of the Lord Jesus. Alyosh, it's all right for you. Jesus Christ ordered you to be here, and so you're here for his sake. Well, why am I here? Because we weren't ready for war in 41. Is that it? Am I to blame for that? Hey, looks like there's going to be no recount. Yeah, right is in coal inside the chimney. No second count. Time for sleep. Out of the house in the hut. Everyone out! Thank you, Cesar Markovich. Hand me a bag. I'll hide it under my pillow. Nobody will think of looking in my bed. Show you've enough for yourself. To take it.
Ivan Denisovich went to sleep content. He'd been fortunate in many ways that day. He hadn't been put in the cells. The team hadn't been sent to the Socialist Center for Cultural Activities. He pinched a bowl of porridge at dinner. The team leader had fixed the rates well. He'd been happy building the wall. He hadn't been caught with the hacksaw blade. He'd earned something from Chesar. He'd bought some tobacco. And he hadn't fallen ill. He got over it. There were 3,653 days like this in his sentence. From the moment he woke to the moment he slept. The three extra days were for leap years. 